In this video, I will go over some of the top tips and tricks on how you can improve your designs and decrease cost while optimizing for manufacturing on a CNC milling process. I'll cover everything from fillets, chamfers, setups, drilling, tapping, undercuts, and even text. A CNC milling machine is used to transform blocks of raw stock into finished parts by cutting away material in a subtractive manufacturing process. There are generally three axes to a milling machine. The X axis, which is left and right movement. The Y axis, which is forwards and backwards movement. And the Z axis, which is up and down. These three axes of motion let the spindle, which spins a cutter at very high speeds, carve away material and leave behind nearly any shape desired. The part being milled is held in a vise, which is in turn attached to the table of the CNC. There are more advanced machines with additional features and axes, but understanding the simple three-axis milling machine is an important first step to mastering manufacturing. There are many countless types of cutters in the world of CNC machining. Understanding the most basic types provides the knowledge needed to design better parts. The flat end mill is the most common end mill and produces a flat bottom cut that is useful for material removal and finishing of vertical walls. The bullnose end mill is similar to the flat end mill, but with very small radii in the corner that increases tool strength by eliminating thin tips. Good for fast material removal and leaving a small bottom radius on parts. The ball end mill is good for servicing complex 3D shapes as well as machining larger bottom floor radii. And finally the drill, which is only useful for making vertical holes in parts. Cutters with the shortest length and largest diameter are preferred. An end mill is effectively a cantilever beam. Every doubling of end mill length for the same diameter increases the deflection by eight times, requiring significantly slower machining times. From an alternative viewpoint, halving the diameter of the end mill for the same length will increase deflection by 16 times. This is seen here where both end mills have the same force applied, but the one on the right is twice as long, resulting in significantly more deflection. This carries into part design, where the designer should always be thinking of the length of the end mill that is needed to machine the feature drawn. Short end mills with large diameter will give the fastest machining time, which will result in the most cost-effective part. Internal fillets should be as large as possible. This allows a large diameter tool to be used, which will decrease machining time. As a rule of thumb, the radius should be less than one-third of the height. So a 12 mm deep pocket should use at least a 4 mm internal radius. It is of course possible to have smaller internal fillets, but the part cost will increase accordingly. Know the size of the tooling you're using and always keep the internal fillet radii slightly larger. This keeps the tool from rapidly increasing the amount of material it's cutting when it makes it to the corner. If the tool diameter exactly matches the internal fillet, then as the tool enters the corner, it will suddenly switch to a huge amount of cutting engagement momentarily, which could cause the cutter to break. For example, if the tool being used is a 10 mm diameter end mill, make the part corner fillet a little bit bigger, say 6 mm. If a square corner is a must for a mating part, then use a dog bone corner. Keep the diameter of the circular corner cut as large as possible. Keep the height of machine features less than four times their width. Tall and skinny features will vibrate significantly during machining, causing poor tolerances and surface finishes. Try and add reinforcement where possible to reduce tall, isolated features. For tapped holes, a through hole is always preferred to a blind hole, as it allows the chips from the cutting threads to be evacuated. Don't tap a hole any deeper than three times the diameter. There isn't any increase in strength past this point, it just gets more difficult to manufacture and to thread in the fastener. For blind holes, always allow the pilot drill to extend past the threads by half the diameter. It is difficult to tap threads all the way to the very bottom of the hole and requires the machinist to change out the tap type to achieve this. Make sure your finished parts fit inside of off the shelf raw stock dimensions. Check your metal supplier for common sizing. Always leave three millimeters below the part for the vise to grip the part with, and at least one millimeter all the way around. This leaves some material to be machined off, so you're always left with a machine surface that looks good 
and is dimensionally accurate. If you want the sharp edge broken on a part, simply point to it on the drawing and label it as break edge. The machinist will deburr this edge. Only model a chamfer if you actually need a specific dimension. Keep the angle of the chamfer as 45 degrees as this is a very common tool size. Different widths of chamfer can be made with the same tool simply by positioning it in a different location. Every time the part is clamped to the vise and located, this is known as a setup. Reducing the number of setups decreases machining time, which makes the part more cost effective. Reducing the number of setups increases part accuracy, as features made in the same setup are made nearly as accurate as the CNC is made, which is quite good. Since all tool paths must originate with a spinning cutter coming from the vertical direction, any features on the side of the part require the part to be removed from the vise and reclamped. Reclamping takes time and introduces an opportunity for error, since the part must be located in the vise again for the program to continue cutting. Always add small fillets to all external corners. They're free features for CNC milled parts. Any radius will work. This type of fillet doesn't drive any tooling due to the fillet being on an outside corner. This will reduce sharp edges and eliminate weak corners that could easily scratch or damage other components during assembly. If very high flatness tolerances are needed, utilize small bosses with reduced area. Especially on larger parts, this allows only certain areas to need high tolerances, while the rest can be held much looser. This way, the machine part can be easily tuned to meet the required tolerances. Keep drill depths to less than six times the diameter of the drill. Longer is possible, but will require special tooling. Alternatively, depending on if the design allows it, drill from both sides of the material to make extended holes. Understand there will be some amount of mismatch where the two drill points meet. Do not specify flat bottom holes unless absolutely necessary. These are difficult to make and require special tooling. Try and avoid fillets along the floor of a pocket as it can be difficult to make, especially if the pocket is deep. If you have to, pick a floor radii that is common among bull nose tools as it will give the machinist some flexibility when making the part. If you're not sure of the tooling being used, make the radius large to allow for large diameter tools to make the cut. Do not fillet the top edge of a part as an edge break. The tooling required for this is specific to the radius of the fillet or will need to be slowly 3D surfaced with a ball end mill. Instead, specify a chamfer as these are much easier to cut and will reduce the price of the machined part. Always ensure that the entire diameter of the drill is contained within the part. If part of the drill hole is outside of the part, then the surface finish will be very poor and the drill may even break. The extremely sharp edge at the corner will likely fold. If this is absolutely required, ensure that the part is drilled first and then material is milled away to leave a partial hole. Try and avoid complex 3D surfaces unless absolutely necessary. These are very slow to machine since a ball end mill must be used to slowly trace back and forth on the part to create the complex surface. If they must be used, make sure any 3D cavities allow for the largest possible ball end mill to reach them. Try and avoid undercuts. They are generally difficult to machine and require special tooling or will require the machinist to use multiple setups to reach in and remove all of the material. If absolutely necessary, keep the undercut amount as small as possible. Try and avoid raised text. Instead, make engraved text that can be machined with a V-bit end mill by removing material. Raised text requires machining out all of the surrounding material and many features of the text will result in nearly square internal corners which require very small diameter end mills to make. Here is a part that is poorly designed for a CNC milling process. This part needs three setups in order to machine all the features since there is unique geometry on three different sides. This part has small internal fillets which are difficult and slow to machine and may require special detooling. The floor also has fillets which will require special detooling. All edge breaks are drawn as fillets which will require 3D surfacing or special detooling to achieve. A few small changes can make a huge difference. First, remove all edge breaks drawn as fillets. Next, remove all floor fillets. Next, 
increase the internal fillet diameter. Finally, reduce setups if possible, in this case turning a hole into a slot that can be machined in the first setup. Parts were quoted on Exometry.com for a quick comparison. A few simple changes saved nearly 40% off the quoted price for this part. Two helpful books to further your education on this are Metalworking Sink or Swim by Tom Lipton and Machine Shop Trade Secrets by James Harvey. Links for both are in the description below. For instant online part quotes, check out Protolabs, Fictive, and Exometry. For finding readily available materials, check out McMaster Car and Online Metals. For modeling software, check out Fusion 360. And for more machining videos, check out the Haas YouTube channel and the NYC CNC YouTube channel.